It was never in doubt, right? It was never in doubt, guys. Um, the Badgers uh, get another close victory in what has really become the MO of this team for the last couple of years. Uh, welcome to Locked On Badgers, live reaction show following the Wisconsin-Minnesota basketball game. We're going to get into some game balls, what we thought of the game, uh, take a bunch of your comments, and also continue talking some of our hits and misses from 2022. Lots to get into on Locked On Badgers. Uh, as always, appreciate you jumping in, and let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. I uh, greatly appreciate everybody tuning in, following up on um, a fun, kind of scary win over Minnesota uh, basketball border battle. We're going to bring Rajiv in here. Rajiv, my friend, how are you doing? Happy New Year's. Happy New Year to you and to all the viewers and listeners. Man, uh, my heart is racing. I got a reminder on my watch that my stress level was too high at the end of that game because the Badgers just keep doing this to us. My yep. goodness, can we just have a now? We were up 15 points in the second half. Why couldn't that just have rolled to the end? But doing well, happy new year, glad to be on. But you didn't actually think it, it was gonna stay at 15, right? So here's the thing, really quick, and then we're gonna by the way, we're gonna have a little structure in this show. We're gonna get into your comments. We're doing live game balls. Um, but you didn't actually think that this was going to like this is who the Badgers are, and it's not just who they are in like some weird metaphysical sense, it's because they can't score consistently. So when yeah. you can't score consistently, you're going to let teams back into uh, – I see Justin here. You're going to let teams back into the game. Like you're not going to sit on 15-point leads when you can't continue scoring. Totally, and and obviously, I mean, and, and that's going to happen. The question of the day is how is it going to happen, right? How is it going to go down? How are we going to let some team get back into it? And today, the rebounding, oh, my gosh, it was like 30. I think we got out-rebounded 40 to 24 and. Clearly, that's a Tyler Wall issue mm -hmm. right there. But still, I mean, so many ugly plays when it comes to it comes to defense. But I mean, to rebounding. But that being said, I would just say this overall: we're three and zero in the Big Ten. Let's kind of put that in perspective and remember that at the end of the day, we're 14th ranked in the country. We're three and zero conference. We yeah. beat Minnesota. We always love to beat Minnesota, even if it's in basketball. So that's nice to see. And you know, there's still some good. There's some bad. We'll get into it, but. Yeah, I mean, listen, Darren, you're right. I, I should expect it by now, but I have wishful thinking. Every time I see us up 15, I'm thinking, okay, all right, we're shooting the ball okay here. Chucky's doing well. Yeah. Connor's doing well. Let's just keep going. But it's they find a way to just raise that heartbeat, raise that stress level. How you doing, Justin? See, I actually thought they'd hold the lead, and that's just because see? Minnesota's terrible. <laughs> I didn't. Minnesota, <laughs> Minnesota's terrible. I thought we'd hold on to it because they stink. They do um, stink, but that's not who we are. <laughs> but – you you got to see tonight how much of a glue guy Wall is um, defensively and from a rebounding standpoint, just knowing where to be in order to get timely rebounds. And Crowell is not a plus rebounder by any stretch of the imagination, um, but he is coming along as a post player so far this year. He's still it's I mean it's still a little more mechanical than I'd like to see it. It's not super smooth in the post, but he's putting up numbers. Um, we got away from Connor a little bit in the second half, and I don't know how much of that was by them taking him away. I really don't think it was. But given how much we were struggling, I realize he had three fouls, but I'll I'll take my chances with him staying on the floor when the, the other options that we have out there based off the lineups that we had for a bit were just terrible. Like, we had some really bad lineups on the floor in this game. You know, I realized that, you know – I don't mind having Ilver out there if you have Chucky, Klesmet, and Crowell out there with them. But man, when you don't have those guys out, there, when you have what what did we have for a lineup at one point? We had a uh, at one point we had Kamari with Max, Ilver, Davis, Davis, and Crowell, and that mm -hmm. is just a team that's not going to. They're score. not going to do anything. We got one banked in three. That was the only point scored with that group on the floor. I'm pretty sure, and and Kamari's not. I mean, he may turn into something at some point. He's not good at running the point yet. Like, he clearly does not know how to get them into sets and move the ball and get things rolling on offense. I mean, that whole group, none of them really do, but yeah. No, let's let's start here. Uh, we're going to do some game balls. Let's let's run around, and I think we could we could give away some. I'm going to start with Klesman, right? I just for the defense. Uh, just take, I mean, he just he took battle out of whenever he was mm -hmm. on battle. Battle had a had no oh, no he easy was, looks. 
that Not, sequence he had in the game when when it was clear battle wanted to put one up and, and he no jabbed chance. at him three times and all three times Klesmet was so much in his jersey that he couldn't he couldn't even think of putting his shot up. He was, that was awesome. a thing of beauty. They called that by the way. I think I, the broadcast. I don't always listen really close to broadcast, but I think they did mention this. That's knowing the scouting report and then executing it. That's two separate mm-hmm. things, by the way. As someone who's been in that locker room a little bit, talking to kids about, hey, take away this player's left hand. Players can know the scouting report, and then when they get out there, they just don't execute it. Mm-hmm. Lesman did both today, so game ball to him. Uh, mm-hmm. Rajiv, let's kick it to you. Yeah, I'm going to say Chucky. <clears throat> you know, I think he uh, – I'm just looking at the stats here. He shot three or four from three, 16 points, four assists, five steals, and yeah. only one turnover. Yeah. I think overall the team really pressured the ball well defensively. We forced a ton of turnovers. Now Minnesota is not very good. We clearly see that. But yeah, Chucky, I mean, I wish he would have shot more in the second half. There's a couple times where he passed up shots and he he tried to create for other people. But listen, especially when Connor's on the bench, you have to be the guy. And we're in in a shooting slump. We're, We're not scoring for five, six minutes. He has to put up some shots and he has to take some risks. Now I've been critical in the past of saying that sometimes he takes too many heat checks and I don't like that. But in key moments, he needs to step up and do that. Yeah, but listen, with- overall, what a game tonight. He yeah. shot the ball really, really well. And defensively tonight, he deserves a lot of credit. Obviously, you mentioned Klesman. But, yeah, my game ball definitely goes to Chucky. You know, I'm just going to round it up because I, I, it would clearly either be one of those two guys. But I'm going to I'm gonna throw the third one at Crowell here. Mm-hmm. Um, carried the scoring load. Honestly, the thing that's kind of driving me nuts, low-key, about his season so far, he is not getting foul calls at all when he's in the post and more often than not, he gets an offensive foul over anything else. Like I realize he's playing physical, but at times it's like, come on, like every other player in the league gets some type of post. He had 17 points and zero free throw attempts playing in the post tonight. Mm. So it's like, what yeah. the heck? But yeah, and you know, he played what, a pretty his, good game. his physicality, I think was great. We've talked on the show a little bit about how he doesn't really have a lot of post moves, but you know, when he just, gets in there, goes up strong. He creates better offensive shots. And I also wish he would use the glass a little more. Garcia did nothing on him tonight. Yeah. I mean, this, he, I I like to see him physical and I feel like he's getting more of that. He, you know, he's obviously put on weight in the off season. He understands what his body is now and he's doing that a little more. And if he continues that, I think some of those post moves, I'm not saying, I know that Ryan, you've said this is not, you're not going to develop that right now, but at least he can get a little bit better at it. Um, but I want him to use the glass more. I, there's no reason why he needs to just, he needs to just, if you're, if you're, especially if you're off that center line, use the glass. And I think it'll make his percentage a lot higher. That being said, he shot eight of 13 from the field tonight. So yeah, huge credit to him. 17 points kept us in the game. Can I give you two really quick crawl things though? Uh, one good and one kind of to your point. Um, the good to your point is he's also the team's best passer. I mean, maybe it's yeah. Hepburn, it's him or Hepburn. So if he is playing more out of that post and being more physical, like, it's just going to open up passing angles for him mm-hmm. as well, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I think it works so well with what he's doing. But the other thing at the end of the game, he can't play hot potato with the basketball. Like, he almost threw it away out of bounds. Minnesota, we caught a huge break there when we were up three. Same thing with Gilmore. Just, well, thing. Gilmore, I want him throwing it right away. <laughs> I want him getting rid of it, but it, you need to well, make a good pass. It's like, like 30% he, from the free throw yeah. line. Like, he needs to get rid of it. But Krell, Krell, you have to make the defense come to you. Like, yeah. that that almost gave Minnesota the ball back with a chance to tie it. But, yeah, not taking anything away. Great I, look, game. I look forward to next year when when Connor's a guy that you can throw the ball back to and nobody wants any part of touching him. Just freaking out. I'm sorry. I was just looking at some of the comments. Brian Latch said, great point, Justin, mm-hmm. on Carl's lack of love from the refs. Um, we are going to get into much a bunch of the comments next segment, but as I see comments that kind of intertwine with what we're talking about, it's good to get those up. Since, since Justin brought up Connor, as, as he always does, I think we should uh, we should talk about Connor a little bit. Um, you know, listen, he shot the ball. Obviously, he one for three from one for three from three overall, um, three of seven, eleven points. A couple of things that I saw from him tonight. You know, you still see some freshman moments from him. Uh, he had two layups blocked, and it's you know I feel like he has to remember that he's he's not in high school anymore. He's gonna he's gonna develop this. Like he's really good. Connor is amazing, and he's gonna be great. But you see a, a few of those moments where. You know, when he's approaching the basket, he needs to be a little bit cleaner on finishing. He needs to be smarter finishing. He can't just beat some guys at the, the, the basket. Yeah, he's got a shield. He can't just go up there. He's going to get blocked. You're in college now. You're playing against guys that are bigger and fast as you are. So, but but I like the aggressiveness. And I want to I want to say the, the bad with the good. You know, yes, he had those freshman moments, but 
boy, it's nice to see the guy taking it to the hoop, right? Mm -hmm. It's nice to see him not being afraid. We've, we've, we've talked about this a lot about he's not afraid, but, and he made some good moves to get to the basket. Mm -hmm. He just got to finish a little stronger, but overall I want to see him in the second half. I think you, Justin, you already brought this up, but yeah, I mean, he's, he's going to be such a great addition to this team. And he's, as the season goes on, he's going to get more and more minutes. I haven't seen his minutes yet. ESPN doesn't put that up right away. Uh, But yeah, I mean, he's, he's just one of those guys that, the more he plays, the better he's going to get, and the smarter he's going to get finishing at the rim. I well, will flat out say we, we got to take a quick break. We're at ten, so I got to take. But then let's let's pick it up after the break, though. Let's pick it up after the break with Connor, and then we'll get into the comments. Uh, so coming up after the break, your comments, and we're going to finish up the discussion with Connor. But first, we do have to take a quick break. Bring it to our, our friends of the show, Bet Online. Uh, Bet Online has you covered this year with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. They are the number one site that we go to for all of our betting needs on Locked On. And it's, again, a place I've talked about. I go there for my live in-game betting, and I go there for my futures betting. And you all know where I'm at. Uh, I have the Suns winning the finals. The 49ers winning the Super Bowl. Uh, I bet with my my heart more so than my head. But you can do that at Bet Online, and that's fun, too. Part of part of sports betting is being a fan and trying to ride with your teams and enjoying the, those wins when you get them. And you can do that at Bet Online. It's a place I go to do it. If you love sports podcasts, they have those there as well. Plus, they have you covered on every single sport you can think of. I follow a lot of sports. Bet Online follows more from golf to NASCAR, esports, UFC. It's all there at Bet Online. Uh, grab your mobile device, head to the website today, learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. Again, I want to say thank you so, so much for everybody tuning in the show. We're going to get into your comments, bring everybody back on the show, um, but really do appreciate us. This new year's kicking on. Everybody just continuing to build the community. So, uh, let's get Rajiv back on, Justin back on. Let's pick up on our Connor discussion. I did really quickly, Rajiv, because you mentioned it. Um, UW Badgers always has live running stats. If you ever want it, they're awesome. Uh, Hepburn, or sorry, Asijan had 20 minutes today. So not nearly enough in my opinion. Yeah. But, uh, Justin, kick it over to you. On, to continue yeah, I mean, podcast. well, when it comes to him, quite honestly, when especially on a night like tonight when, when Wall's not there, you need sc- as much scoring on the floor as possible. And – Clearly, I realize he had some foul trouble, but you need to take that chance because you have nobody really to – like we saw some of the lineup out there that – I mean, it looked like bad rec basketball at some points with how sloppy it was. It's like these guys want nothing to do with taking a shot. You know, that lineup we talked about earlier is – you look at it and you're like, there is nobody but Crowell on there and somebody's got to get him the ball. Like he's – they're not – he's going to have he's gonna have five guys collapsing on him if you throw it in the post in that situation with Crow, like maybe Klesman is a guy you could give it to, but even that it's like, you're really in an uncomfortable situation there when there's nobody to draw the defense away from the post or from Klesman. Can we bring up Daryl's comment? I think it's something that we should kind of talk about when we're, when we're talking about Connor, is it time for him to start? I mean, we, we talk about minutes. We talk about the time on the floor. I know we've, we've kicked this around a little bit before, but is it time for him to get in the starting lineup? What do you guys think? So I would say no, but it's frustrating me that guard I, – I don't think guard is using him as efficiently as he should. Um, and by the way, for foul trouble, I only see one foul for, for him listed. I don't know if that's accurate or not. He had more. Okay. I think he had three. So ESPN and UW Badgers both only have one listed. Really? Okay. Uh, but but I, yeah. I, I thought he had more too. Either way, either way, with three fouls, you can still play. It's not like you have four fouls. Yeah. You're going to have to bench. You don't need to sit a guy and take him out of the game because he has three fouls. Uh, but sorry, Rajiv, go to Daryl's comment. I like that they're scoring punch off the bench because there's nobody else on the bench that yes, trusts. Exactly. So you, you I, can't I like have that ball. second unit come in and just have it go into a like a total lull every time. But it's a I good agree. Question. I agree, but I actually, I mean, I I see your point, but I disagree with it, and the reason is because early in games, we, I mean, to start this game, what was it, like two two after six minutes of game time. I feel like we need a little offensive punch to start the game too. I mean, and I understand the thought about the bench, and I get that, but ultimately you got to have your best players on the floor. And I feel like he's earned that starting role now. And we don't know what it would be like with him starting. We've never seen it. So I say, give him a shot out there and let's see what he can bring at the start of the game. Let's kick things off because if, if you kind of start the game in a, in a certain rhythm, in a certain manner, it can kind of permeate through the rest of the game and through the rest of the team. So I would like to see him in the starting lineup. Now I've been on the side of not starting him for a while, but Based on what I'm seeing in the early part of games, let's bring him in and start him. That's my opinion. Let's see, I, I'm curious because I I kind of feel what will happen then is that a lot of his opportunities are going to get stolen by the upperclassmen. Like I think he, when he's the guy that comes in off the bench and you're kind of taking some of those other guys off the court, 
you're you know he's going to have to be a focal point somewhat of what you have out there. And I think when you have Wall, Chucky, and Crowell all out there at the same time, and Klesmet, who's a decent shooter, he can get lost a little bit out there in terms of being the guy who you want to get shots to. Um, yeah, I, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, too, again, I, I like that he finished the game today, right? Yeah. I, I, I'm more – that's more where I'm at. Like, I, I, he's not getting enough minutes, though. That's still a frustration for me. And you should be able to get him those. He needs to be getting thirty minutes. Quality. And starting yeah, I mean, would would fix that, by the way. Well, like, if he started, is, well, you could still give him thirty even off the bench. Yeah, you, yeah, I guess my bigger point is you should be able to give him thirty or twenty eight coming off the bench, right? But and guard's reason, not going to do that though. But guard's then guard's not going to give it to him when he's starting. I don't think either, because guard like that. And I could be wrong on that. That's only my opinion. But I feel like he's I, not I, doing this because guard has a tighter leash on him. I think if he starts in place of Davis, then you're going to see Davis get less minutes and Connor get more minutes. And to me, it's just like, I just feel like that's, he's going to get more minutes because he's starting. Davis will come in a little less and I'm okay with that. You know, and I, I just, I just feel like starting slow. We can't start slow anymore. It really puts us it It doesn't just put us in a hole for that beginning of the game. It sets the tone for the game. And that's a good discussion. Um, yeah. And ENS says, very true, Rajiv, we start slow, we need a spark. So he's kind of on board with you. I think it's a good discussion. I, I would tend to just continue. I like him coming off the bench. I don't want him overthinking things, but I hear your point on it. I think it's a valid discussion to have for sure. Um, can, can I kick Can I kick something to you, Ryan? I know there's something that you've talked a lot about, and I'd like to just kind of bring it up, is depth. I mean, I know that you've talked a lot about depth and our inability to, to have that depth and, and guards kind of frustrated. You're you being frustrated with guard not playing more people. What are your thoughts on our depth right now? Because it's looking pretty weak, and I know that you have some mm-hmm. thoughts on it. Yeah, I I don't think we have any. I mean, if if not to be too simplistic, but I think we have Gilmore coming off the bench. And there's a great comment from Daryl in here that I was trying to find about Carter or Carter Gilmore. Uh, I'll see if I can find it in here really quick. Um, well, I don't know where it is. I'll find it later. But my point is, like, guard, guard, Carter doesn't even look at the three-point line anymore. When he gets the ball, he doesn't even look at the hoop. He's essentially a non-guarded player offensively. So you have one guy coming off the bench that can score. Um, it's Connor Seijin. There's what no I, reason. Oh, uh, what I was going to say really quick, what I had hoped guard would do is that he would play Kamari McGee, Marcus, or, or Ilver a little bit more in games that didn't matter as much to build up some confidence and consistency mm-hmm. with them so you can rely on them. I think guard is a little too stubborn in that sense, but – He's not going to change, and because of that, we really don't have depth. Um, so yeah, we're in the same boat we were last year, and injury is going to sink yeah. this team. I think that you need to find like a way to get Ilveron for five minutes, even even somebody like Hodges, who can provide some physicality in the post for a game. Because honestly, if we face a team that's actually got some real size, Hodges is bigger than any of the guys that we have. I don't get him five minutes, get him two yeah. minutes, just to get him totally. out there so he, you're getting his feet wet. Like, I don't expect him to be a scoring threat, but do you really think that he's going to be s- such a problem out there that you like he's going to give up a 10 point lead in two minutes? Like, he can't be that bad. And he, he hasn't looked terrible the few minutes that he has gotten late in the game. Mm-hmm. So just give yeah. him an opportunity to give him a minute or two and extend if they get, you know, he shows you something. Yeah, yeah and I agree. Me. I I agree. I think that Ron, I think you said it best about how we never, we don't play Pete. We, sh- we could have played these guys earlier in the season. And now we're in big 10 play where you can, this is not the time to introduce players. Mm-hmm. I do think we still, like Justin said, Hodges has got to, it's just a body. He's a big body and we need to get him minutes because and he, he will get well. better. And yeah, and he will get better. He will be able to, because look guys, when we play Purdue, we're going to need, guys on the floor that he's going to be on he's going to be on the floor for that yeah game because so let's, let's because get him some is going to have an incredibly difficult time not being in foul trouble in that game right and right. you can't cover him with gilmore you can't no. like he's going to be basically just get down on the post and just toss yep. it in every time yeah but you're also you know to you, both your points and what we were saying earlier you're an injury to the to the front court like a tyler wall from being away from needing mm-hmm. to play gilmore like 30 minutes and then you need to back it behind him which by the Which, way, hopefully this is nothing that costs him to be out for the next couple of weeks because mm-hmm. we can't afford that him to not be on the court in big time play. And we've got some no. tough games coming up. Mm-hmm. All right, let's let's hit some of these comments here quick. Um, some of these we're just going to bring up. Uh, Joe Jensen, great game by Max, great play by Chucky at the end. Heck yeah. Uh, let's see, Logan Cowich. Hope Tyler Wall is okay. Let's let's and Logan and, and Joe and Darren and Zach and everybody. We're going to get to a bunch of comments. Thank you for for tuning into the show for sure. Um, let's say Tyler Wall misses some time. 
Um, Carter Gilmore becomes the starter. Do we then start seeing? Hey guys, I'm gonna have to drop off just real quick. See you, Justin. Thanks, guys. So, what happens then? I mean, I think we're in some trouble. What is what happens? And I mean, obviously, rebounding is gonna be the biggest problem that we're gonna have, and scoring, you know, and just kind of clutch play, but. I think more falls on Chucky and Crowell, you know, and I think in that in that sense, I think a CG in as well. I mean, it's just gonna the scoring has to move to the other players, and it's gonna be really hard. Now, I'm I'm I think I said in our group chat, I think that him not playing the second half was probably precautionary. Um, you know, I, I I really I don't know. I mean, it could be bad, but I feel like you know he was sitting on the bench. I, I don't think he was wearing anything. I think it, it might have been taped up. He wasn't wearing anything on like a boot or anything like that. So I feel like. It probably was just like we're not going to risk him um, mm-hmm. against Minnesota, so let's just keep him out. Let's evaluate him. So I'm hoping that he's back for our next game. But yeah, I mean, with him being out, it's going to have a similar effect to what we saw last year when Chucky went out in the tournament. It's going to it's going to completely change the team, and it's going to mean that we're, a lot more pressure falls on other guys. Yeah, and listen, we're not going to be playing a lot of teams that turn the ball over like seven straight times in the second half. I mean, right. some of that was Wisconsin's defense. Yep. Some of it was Klesman. Some of it was just Minnesota's terrible. Like they're yeah, I mean, not, they are not, a 500 team. They're not very good, but yeah. But credit to the defense, though. I mean, we, yeah. we did force a lot of those for sure. All right, let's take a really quick break. We're going to go back, get to more of your comments on Lockdown Badgers. Really do appreciate everybody tuning in. Coming up, uh, I'm going to get one of Rajiv's bad takes of 2022 as well, so I don't feel bad with all my bad takes. i got to loop someone else into my swamp of sadness. Uh, that's coming up next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, a word from our sponsors. All right, everybody, I want to say thank you again for tuning in. Let's get to some more comments, and then we're going to kick it over to Rajiv to get a couple of his bad takes from 2022 and a couple of his good takes. I wanted to bring this one up. Darren said, Ilver was all or nothing. You could tell Crow was trying to direct him and set him up to post, but Ilver would just drive instead. His D was awful. I would have to go back and look, Darren. I didn't actually think Ilver's D was awful, um, but I, I could be wrong. I'll have to go back and look. Offensively, Ilver shoots every time he's open. So there's... <laughs> Which I actually kind of dig, by the way, because I, I think he has a, I think he's skilled. I think he has a decent shot. And quite frankly, sometimes you need people out there looking for their shot because this team doesn't do that enough, mm-hmm. in my opinion. And frankly, he just needs to be out there because we need more minutes from other people on the bench. And he's someone who ha- brings enough skill to the game that it will bring something. And he'll, cont- he'll continue to improve as, as the season continues, the more minutes he gets. Uh, this was a comment in response to somebody saying, uh, why wasn't Connor out there more at the end? Joe Jensen said they may have been worried about his ball handling and decision-making in the big moment. Rajiv. I mean, it's not a, he's not completely wrong. I mean, I feel like we have seen a few of those freshman moments from him, but I would say that his, what he brings is more of a plus and it outweighs the risk of ball handling in late game situations because you can shield him from that a little bit by simply not having him in, in key areas. And I, I just, I feel like he brings too much to just not be in there more. Um, and like you've mentioned, he played at the end, which is good. And obviously his free throw shooting is fantastic. So, uh-huh. you know, he needs to be in there at the end as well for that, because, you know, crowd missing another front end of the one and one was, was almost cost us, you know, winning that game. So yeah, I, I still think the the benefits outweigh the risks. Yeah, I agree with you there, it, but it's also partially because I don't know what the better option is. Right. I mean, who else do you put out there as a ball handler? Yeah. You have Chucky, obviously. And then if Tyler Wall's not in the game, especially, you have, I mean, right? Like, I, you, theoretically, McGee, but if he got more minutes, we'd be able to see more of him. But you it's, know. it's Klesman, Hepburn, and I think you have to have Connor out there more. Uh, Joe, thank you for the comments again. Darren, once again, says we really miss Wall on the boards. We talked about that. Yeah. Oof. Man, and and not only, I mean, geez, the blocking out. We we just looked ugly. We looked like we had we had no idea where the ball was. We had no idea where our guys were that we were blocking out. When well, we block out one guy, then someone else wouldn't would hit their assignment, and then bam, we just get an easy layup. I mean, it was ugly at times on the wow. boards. And listen, when we when we're playing teams like Purdue and Indiana, we are gonna really struggle if we don't rebound the ball. I just I'll just tell people right now that Purdue game is gonna be tough to watch. Like I they. Mm-hmm. I, they are going to manhandle us, I think. But maybe I'm being pessimistic. Um, Joe Bird says, Joe Burud, Burud, maybe I'm mispronouncing it. I apologize if I am. Against a good team, this lack of depth is going to hurt us. I agree. I, this is why, um, I, in one of our earlier shows, I said, I don't think this team is getting out of the round of 32. And it's partially because of the depth. This, this team has to be in perfect health to really get past those first two weekends. And we saw last year, it couldn't do it. We've already seen Tyler Wall get nicked up. I just think it's difficult to make it through the Big Ten tournament. Big 10 season going into March 
in perfect health. Yeah, totally. I mean, he Joe's right. We're we're going to struggle, and we're going to see that really soon. Uh, we play Indiana coming up soon. That's a that's going to be a tough test for us. We have a lot. Of, I mean, the Big Ten's loaded this year. Uh, I think only four or five of the teams are ranked, but there's a lot of good teams, and we're we're going to get found out quickly about our depth. But uh, hopefully, the, the the guys that we do have can play well enough that we can get through some of that. But listen, a three and zero start is a heck of a way to start that Big Ten season and gets us that leg up. For sure, uh, Dean said he missed the first half. His son was playing high school ball. Where's your priorities, Dean? Come on, man. Uh, what happened to Wall? He he sprained his ankle going up for a rebound. Uh, we haven't heard anything more. Um, he did. He was mobile afterwards, like Rajiv said. He was in the game for a little bit, so hopefully nothing major. Um, Logan Cowich says, I absolutely can't wait for Gus Alden. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about this year, but that dude, I'm telling you, that dude is going to be so – Ryan mad. loves this dude. <laughs> He's going to be so – so really quick, just to remind people on Gus – um, I had um, Jason Jordan, the sports social recruiting director on, and he said every gym he went to on, in the AAU circuit, every single one with four and five star kids, Gus Yaldin walked out of every one of those gyms as the best post player. They said he took it to big dudes, four and five star kids who could not, could not handle him. So, and by the way, Jason's not a, not a badger guy. He's not into blowing smoke. He's the same guy that said Connor Seijin is better than people think. He's not just a shooter. He's going to play right away as a freshman. Like, so yeah, I can't wait for Gus either. Um, let's keep getting some comments in here. Here's a good one. Uh, Rajiv, the team needs more athletes from the portal. Yeah, definitely. I mean, look, we need more athletes, period, wherever we get them from. But, you know, it, I thought it was it, – once again, it was kind of painfully obvious that we don't have them. And late shot clocks, we don't really have the ability to drive to the hoop. We don't have any ability to kind of get separation driving down the lane. Um, when we did, Klesman did a little of that, but he's just not fast enough. Chucky's not fast enough. Um, Connor just needs to finish a little better. Yeah. I mean, we need more athletes. You've said it a several times on the wings and, and, and we're, you know, obviously hopefully next year we'll have a little more of that. And I think that'll, but we, we should use the portal more. We should be bringing in some other athletes because it'll improve our depth and our overall, overall athleticism, especially late in shot clocks, late in games. It's a miss for us. Yeah, I agree. Uh, there was another comment in here they missed that said they should have gone after scoring big in the portal. They were after a couple. Um, they just weren't able to land them. So maybe they should have – I don't know. Maybe you can put that on the staff for not recruiting efficiently or trying to sell it enough. But they did recognize that as a need. They wanted another guy to come in behind Corral. But those guys are hard to find because nobody was coming here to be a starter, right? It's hard to yep. find a guy to transfer in to be a backup to Stephen Corral. Uh, let's keep going here. Uh, a couple more comments with Gilmore. Gilmore looks pretty sketchy out there, to be honest. Um, he's he's just really – he's he's just not very good offensively. Like, it's hard because I love the kid. He, he, I mean, he's a, he works his butt off. He does a lot of glue plays, right? He's uh, by percentage one of our best rebounders. He's a good defensive player, but he's shooting literally like 30% from the free throw line. He can't score at the rim. He's not even looking at, at – perimeter shots anymore so the defense isn't even respecting it which clogs up all the spacing it's kind of a disaster offensively um as much as i really like the kid yeah i mean he puts in the effort that's all that's what you can say about him <clears throat> and you know i thank him for that and i want to continue to um you know see that effort but it's going to be a struggle and if wall misses time we're going to see how much of a struggle this can be and Alien Space says, can't wait for Nolan Winter as well. Also in that 2023 class, um, Rajiv loves Winter. Oh, yeah. We, we, we <laughs> this guy is going to be – he is going to be fantastic. He can move so well. He can shoot well. He's long. This guy is is my number one guy for next year. I am pumped to see this guy. Can't wait. And by the way, how awesome is it? Because I, I love Winter as well. I think Winter is probably the higher upside guy. I think Gus is probably the safer college player. I'm um, not sure if Rajiv agrees on that or not, but either way, it's amazing to have two guys coming in uh, that are both like, we're, we're really excited for both of these guys and John Blackwell jr. As well is going to give us some athleticism and toughness on the perimeter. Um, let's finish on this comment here. Bryce toll free. I agree with your points. I uh, love this start. I uh, love the start, but we have a problem with depth. I'm afraid it's going to cost us at some point. This is, I want to loop this back to what we were talking about with Connor starting actually. And it's kind of one of those things where, I feel like we're both correct. Like we really could use a better start and more scoring punch in that initial offense, but we also could use more scoring punch off the bench. It's like you don't have enough Connor to go around in a sense. Yeah. I mean, I, I see that point. And, and ultimately I think him starting simply equals more minutes. And and I feel like that's the reason that's the main reason I want him out there because he's, he's the best pure shooter we have. I mean, when we were running super cold there in the first half, he just, 
lit one up from deep and it's just like it kind of kickstarted everything and that's imagine if we had that on the first couple of possessions of the game you know like it just i really think we're gonna see the team be different when he starts i i really hope it happens soon mm, it'd be interesting um i think it's interesting to, to think about for sure i don't think guard's gonna do it though yeah i don't i don't think he is uh, all right, everybody, we're going to wrap it up there. Really do appreciate everybody tuning in. Appreciate Rajiv, as always. Uh, listen, it was a win. And a win is a win is a win. We're going to have a bunch more close games this year on the basketball side. Uh, we didn't get to some of the, the 2022 takes. We'll do that later. We had a bunch of comments, and I always want to make sure I get to those. So we're going to wrap it up there. Badgers win on Wisconsin, and let's keep it going. Coming up tomorrow, we got uh, John Garcia Jr. coming in. We're talking about Tanner Mordecai. Uh, we also have – I'm trying to think. We have a couple other fun co guests coming up. We have uh, – Oh, an SMU uh, media member coming on to talk about Tanner as well. So we have some fun stuff coming up, but we'll definitely keep Rajiv on as well. On Wisconsin, Rajiv, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you.